Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our webinar on the Indecision Candlestick Trading Strategy brought to us tonight by Invest Markets, one of the world's leading trade providers of Forex and CFD trading. You can trade with confidence when you trade with Invest Markets. You have their intuitive web browser platform. You can use their MT4 platform. You can use your mobile device. You can use any device you want and trade anywhere. <clears throat> Plus, when you trade with Invest Markets, you get a huge amount of tools, indicators, and market information. First, you get the revolutionary new AI desk, news desk brought to you by Trading Central directly on our platform. You'll be able to stay up to the minute on every asset out there. <clears throat> Plus, you get all the analysis from Trading Central. You get the analysis views, the daily market analysis, economic insights, strategy newsletters. You get their research platform, and you get web TV. What else is there to ask for? So whether you want to trade stock CFDs on the global markets, you want to trade Forex commodities, you now have the right place to go with Invest Markets. So let's get ready to start learning about the indecision candlestick trading strategy. Now, there are probably as many trading strategies as there are traders out there. But not all trading strategies and trading plans are created equal. I suggest that you find some strategies and then build a trading plan around them. There's a plethora of trading strategies available to you, but I also encourage you to create your own trading strategy. Now tonight, we're gonna to be looking at my indecision candlestick strategy. There's no way in the next 40 minutes, I'm gonna be able to tell you everything and anything there is in my head about this trading strategy, nor are you gonna be able to master it because it's mine, it's not yours. Uh, so I'm gonna give you the guides and the steps. You then have to make it your own. You have to test, you have to work with it. But I'm gonna give you all the, the, the beginning points. Now, any guru out there that's on the internet preaching, the, follow this, do that, do this, is full of it because most of them can't even imagine all the words to get every little thing that they think out of their heads to you and for you to absorb it. So when they teach you or tell you, do this, do that, do this, they, they're not telling you the little things that the market does that you have to be able to see or feel to make it your own. So when you build and test your own strategy, you are the master and you understand all the ins and outs and you're not just trying to duplicate someone else's thoughts. I always encourage traders to develop their own trading strategies, time permitting. Now, there are several reasons why I believe it's important for traders to develop their own strategies. First, creating strategies requires that you develop a greater knowledge of the market and price movements. Okay, and that is ultimately important when you try to mimic and do, no, I'm not saying ignore. I'm not saying not don't take advantage. What I'm saying is take advantage of what's out there. Don't follow it blindly. Take it and make it your own. Make it your indecision strategy. Make it your reverse trade strategy so that you know it be, how it works for you better than anybody else does. So secondly, when one develops their own trading strategy, they are tuned into how the strategy works what will cause it not to work, and it will be a much better place to adjust when necessary. If you trade someone else's trading strategy like mine, test it thoroughly, and in the process, you make it your own as you learn the ins and outs of it and possibly add your own twists. Now, it sounds like, ah, I don't wanna do this, but this is the, the time consuming part, but it can also be fun. For me, the real fun is testing out what I produce. But before we can test, we need to have an idea. So how do I generate my ideas? How do I come up with my strategies? Well, the first thing I do is I look at, I, I trade a very limited set of assets and I watch these assets very closely. I know them like my the back of my hands. Now, whenever I miss an opportunity, 
Not that I didn't see it, not that I didn't trade it, but I completely missed it. Well, when that happens, I go back and look at my chart and say, what could I have done that would have caught me this trading opportunity? And I either adjust some of my strategies or I add in some new filters so that the next time I get a buzz or I get an alert saying, here's an opportunity. In short, you wanna analyze your charts looking for opportunities, examine those opportunities and construct how you may turn those opportunities in the gains without exposing yourself to the key number here. The key word here is excessive risk. So you wanna be able to filter your inputs, but you don't wanna reinvent the wheel. Okay? You can learn from trading analysts and experienced traders. They are still in the market because they're successful. Study their strategies and learn from them. Don't follow them blind, blindly, but test out what they're saying, see if it works, Figure out when it doesn't work, how to make it work better, and make it yours. But also, you have to decide with the strategy what you're trying to accomplish. Do you want to give it trading alerts? Do you want it to give you entry and exit points? Well, I use mine. I use two different strategies. One to give me alerts, and then one that's a filter system that decide, that tells me whether it's a reasonable trade or not. So whether now, one of the key things that I rely on, okay, for all of my strategies, for all my trading, they're on all of my charts, are support and resistance. The peaks and troughs of the movement of an asset. The important part is that you get better with identifying these levels where price changes direction and reverses. So support and resistance is ultimately important because it isolates the points below and above where that asset is and where it might be interesting. Where are the bulls gonna come in? Where are the bears gonna come in? These areas can be significant for traders to be able to, to recognize where there are high probability areas of entering a trade with lower risks. So identifying these areas on your chart is crucial. Now, tonight's class is not about learning how to master support and resistance. We have whole one hour classes in teaching you all the different ways to get support and resistance, how to draw the lines on your charts, how to key code them and everything else. And when we get live charts in a few minutes, you're gonna to start to see how I use them. So support and resistance areas show you where to buy or sell. They are a vital part of every trader's toolkit. And it's important that you learn how to place them. Placing support and resistance areas are, is one of the most important skills you can master in trading. And the reason we're really discussing this is because the indecision candlestick trading strategy is one of its key features or one of its key elements is support and resistance. Now, it is one of the most important skills you can master. And placing them is, e is easy, it's time consuming. And you have to build a system for yourself. Well, let, let's pop up a live chart here. Let's see one that's easy. Okay, oh, let's see if I can find it better. See all these red lines going horizontally across? Those are levels of support and resistance. Now, I just, uh, I have all these charts open for class, but I want to show you, let's see. Okay, these levels come from the past and move forward. They're only important, the levels that are only important are the levels above and below the current price level. You know, one step, two steps, three steps above or below. Think of them as elevator, you have an elevator. Price is moving in the elevator and you have the floor below your feet and the ceiling above your head. Each time that elevator goes up, you have to break that ceiling and it becomes the floor under your feet. When the elevator reverses and come down, it's the reverse. But these were strategic points in the history of the asset. Every time it got to this price, what had happened? Did it hit 
two years ago and reverse off of it, go back up to it, reverse off of it. And then did it happen again last year? And every time that it traded, was that level a significant area? And if so, you draw your lines in your chart and they are then brought forward and they stay on your charts forever. And the next time the asset's trading in that range, those levels will reappear and, and they'll be important to you. I then use color codes and keys to let me know how, if it's a major level, a minor level, whether it's a long-term level, whether it's more than two years old, whether it's six months old, so that I can quickly see what levels are crucially important. You can see in the journey right here at the pound, for instance, we can see how important this price level has been in the journey. And every time that this asset got between 136 and 1358, it had some little hems and all. It didn't say it can't go up through it, but see that pushed up, bounced off, came back down, moved back up, pushed off, bounced back down, moved up. This time it broke through, fell back down, got stuck around it again, came back up, broke through it, came back through it. And then look at this, how important it was here. Then, you know, there, it's, it's, you'd have new support levels here. But as the asset starts crashing back down, these would become important again. Now, I also call them alert zones. Because you can see on this chart, this yellow area above and below, those are also support and resistance levels. And for this class, I've colored them in and made them a zone because a support and resistance line is like an elevator, but it's not finite because you don't have floor one, floor two, floor three. You might have seen that 137,742 was a significant price, but 137,734 could have been a significant. So I always take five points on either side of my line to give me a broad range. So you can see, that's why we have this zone here because it's not a finite number. If you waited for exactly every time the euro, the pound were to hit this red line, it, it you know, because we're dealing with pips, we're dealing with small numbers all the way to the right. And you can see here the same thing Here, the same thing. Okay. At this point, nothing really happened. But this goes on to our next step of where we're going to get a breakout. See, here's our zone here between those two lines. Okay. Now, let's go on. And we've got the basis of support and resistance because we, you know, I'm assuming most of you in class already know how to put this on your charts. So good traders don't randomly place entry orders and hope that they get lucky. They place their entry orders at significant price levels. Significant price levels come in many forms, but we would use support and resistance to help figure out entry and exit points and also how we expect or the, we expect the behavior of the asset. Why? Well, this happens all the time on Forex pairs and, and just about every tradable asset. And this is how the market works. Buy and sell orders are grouped together in the same general area. And when they are hit, we see the impact of price. It's not just because price is moving up and it got a little bit tired and it decided to take a rest and get a glass of water. You know, some guy, some companies, some hedge fund, when he bought the euro 117.4, because it was trading very low, he said, good, I need to make my 14 pips or my 18 pips, my 20 pips, because he's investing a billion dollars and he only wants those couple pips. And he's already set a sell at 117.82. So 117.82 gets triggered, his whole big billion dollar trade is gonna sell out. Other traders have seen that level. Now that's become a crucial level in the future. Doesn't mean the asset's not gonna stop and go through it. This is traders who entered at 117 who wanted 50 points profit set their take profit point at that level, and it triggered it. Other traders who were looking to buy might have said, uh, I'll, you know, I'll buy it every 15 points. So as it moves up, you know, I'll buy 100, I'll buy 200, I'll buy a... And 
This is also where they set their stop losses and their their exit points. So the biggest difference though with support and resistance is it needs to be done by a human being. It needs to be done by a person. There are a couple odd and n charting mechanisms that will chart these for you. When we get to pivot points, because pivot points, pivot point support reasons are calculations and they're only calculated based on the current price. So some people mix them up with support and resistance, but they're really just pivot points. But now, once we get these support and resistance levels on a chart, there's some things that we need to remember. There are three key, th three rules to keep in mind when you're placing support and resistance. Place areas on the body of the candle. The body is more important than the wick. The more recent the bounce, the more important. Prioritize recent bounces over older bounces. You need at least two connecting bounces to place support and resistance. You can't just say, ah, look at that, it hit 137.4 and then went down and I'm going to just draw a line there. The more times it's hit and the more historically it's been at a price, the more important, the more valuable it is. Now, we've got this on our charts and we're using candlesticks or candlestick chart. Now, most new traders learn a little bit about candlestick analysis, but most of what they learn is completely useless. I've been teaching for 12 years now. And my biggest attended webinars are usually always introduction to candlesticks. Everybody wants to learn about candlestick patterns, reading these candlesticks on the chart. But the fact is, this is pattern recognition. And it's basically useless. Because the standard approach to candlestick analysis is basic pattern recognition, which fails to work in real trading. Now you can't just skip through to the advanced candlestick analysis without knowing some basics first, but don't worry, we got you covered. So when traders first start out, they usually learn all about candlesticks, but what they learn is useless. They normally see a list of candle patterns, like the ones, and they, they're told to memorize them. And when this happens, do this. When this pattern appears, do that. Well, that's a big waste of time because you know that there's 36 basic candlestick patterns, 72 major can 36 majors, 72 basics, and about a hundred more in between. Okay. And anybody who tells you that when you see this pattern blindly do this, you lose your money. But this is not candlestick analysis. It's pattern recognition. It's memorization. And for a price action trader, it is useless. Thinking about candles is just a, in patterns is counterproductive. Why? Giving a pattern a set definition leads to tunnel vision. When you see that specific pattern, you assume that something will happen. But that's not how candlesticks really work. Candle, all candlesticks need to be assessed based on the candlesticks around them and many other factors. So the truth about candlestick analysis is normally people say that a spinning top means reversal is imminent, which can be true. However, the same pattern can also mean that a continuation is imminent. It can mean that price is temporarily stalling. It can mean a lot of different things. So thinking of candles as simple patterns is the wrong way to do things. You need to look beyond the pattern and read the story of price. And that's really what candlesticks are all about. It's the story of price. What is the candlestick on the chart trying to tell you? So every single candlestick on your chart is telling you a story. When you combine those candles together, you get the story of price. The foundation to my trading chart is reading and understanding the story of price. Reading and understanding the story of price is vital in CFG trading. It is vital because it allows you to answer one of the most important questions. And it's really a basic question, but it's a question you should always ask yourself before you decide to enter a trade. Who is in control of price? 
Now the question is three possibilities, buyers, sellers, or neither. Being able to accurately answer this question is vital. Now we're not talking about who's in charge of the market. Is gold in a bull market? Is gold in a bear market? I don't care. You shouldn't care. What you care about is what gold is doing at this moment for the next 15 minutes, for the next two hours, maybe for the next 24 hours. So even though gold is in a bullish market because it's been climbing up for the last six months, we only care that gold went up to 1842 this week and it's eased down to 1800. It's probably going to come back down to 1740 or 1750 before it maybe turn around. We want to take advantage of that decline. We don't care that it's in a bullish market. We care of who is in control of price at this moment. So being able to accurately answer this question is vital. If you are about to enter a short trade, you want to ask yourself, who's in control of price? If your answer is the buyers, well, perhaps selling is not a great idea. So let's break down the story of price. So if you look at the three highlighted candles on the left, it is easy to conclude that at that moment in that, we're looking at say a 30 minute candle for the last hour and a half at least, who's in control of the market? The sellers. But that's what you might conclude, but that's not the story of price. The candles all closed lower than they opened. They created new lows beyond the previous candle low and they all had small upper wicks in comparison to the, the candle body. The upper small wicks indicate the buyers were unable to push price up by much. But what does the highlighted candle in this chart tell us? Now remember here, we were looking at those three candles, but this is what, so we're saying, you'd be looking and saying, ah, the bears are in control, but this candle here is the most significant candle to any of you. It has a short, and it's not because it's green. It has a short upper wick, a small body, and a long lower wick. This is what I call an indecision candle. Not just myself, this is what traders call an indecision candle. It isn't telling you much of anything. It's just telling you there's some indecision in the markets. Whether the buyers got tired for the moment, whether there's some news highlight that everybody's watching on the news, whether there's some economic event happening, whether it's lunchtime and everybody went out to lunch. All we know is at that moment, we got indecision. Doesn't mean that the sellers aren't gonna come back in after lunch and keep pushing the price all the way down. Doesn't mean anything. At that moment, in that 30 minute segment, we had indecision. Nobody was in control of the markets. So, What's an indecision candle? An indecision candle occurs when neither buyers or sellers can gain and maintain control of price. They are common, but if used in the right way, they can be very powerful. Take a look at this bullish trend and the strong trend, and let's take a look at what we have in here. Here we have bulls in control, moving up, moving up. Now I'm using three candles for, for the graphic here. We could have five candles, seven candles, we could have a mix of one red candle in between. But what do we see is in control of the market? We're pushing, continuously pushing price up. So what would you say? And we're looking at short-term trends. We're not looking at long-term because we're CFD traders. We're trading in the short term. So we would say up to this point, that the buyers or the bulls were controlling the market. And then we get an indecision candle. Now these little indecision candles appear all the time, all over your charts. They don't mean much of anything, but if we take it in conjunction with a strong upward or downward move prior to their appearing, them appearing in the opposite color of the strong move, because you could get an indecision candle that was green, but then it would have a short wick and a long, but it also appears directly on your support or resistance zone. Remember the zones we were talking about a minute ago? This candlestick appears exactly there. When it appears exactly on that zone, it's telling you this 
support and resistance zone of this price level zone is working. It's giving the buyers and the sellers a reason to take their hem in the halls. They're taking their, they're easing away. It's also most likely a point where a lot of buyers or a lot of sellers put either buy orders or they put sell orders in, they put stop losses in, depending on where they were looking at the markets. But we get this indecision candle on top of our support zone. So this is when we've got one thing happening, two things happening, three things happening. Well, that's a lot of things happening already. Now, an indecision candle is important. When price hits resistance and we get an indecision candle forming, Let's break down this candle into the story so you can understand why it indicates indecision. We have a large upper wick up here. Oh, sorry, got to get my marker off. A large upper wick shows the buyers tried to continue the bullish trend but failed and sellers took control of price and pushed it down. The small bearish body. The small bearish body shows that the sellers were able to close lower than the open. This is significant because in the three, four, five, six previous candles, price consistently closed higher than open. This show us, shows us that the buyers are losing pressure. Then we have a small lower wick. The small lower wick shows us that the sellers were not able to gain much ground either. This tells us the sellers are not strong enough to turn price around yet. However, they are strong enough to stall further buyer movement. So altogether, this indecision candle forming right after a strong bullish candle suggests that the power has shifted from a decidedly bullish market to an undecided, not to a bearish market, but to an undecided market. While sellers are not controlled, neither are the buyers at that moment. But there's one more thing we need to look at. The indecision candle is forming on top of a resistance area. Price stalls and we get indecision forming on top of that area. This tells us that the selling area is working. When price pushed into the sell area, orders triggered and buyers could no longer continue up. And that's the story of price on this chart. And this story gives us a nice little price action setup. Price action allows you to take many different types of trades, reversals, continuations, rain, swing, breakout, scalp trades, just to name a few. So how do we want to spot a reversal trade? Now let's pop up some live charts here for a second. Okay, I'm gonna blow this up as much as I can so you can see. Now, the blue levels are support and resistance levels. So the blue level here is our resistance level. Price is moving up. Now you see it went right through there, but then it fell back down and then it got stuck. And we got this indecision candle right on the support zone. And price though continued straight up there because there are several factors that we have to see before we can make a trade. Okay, here we have price moving up, breaks out of the candle, comes into our resistance zone. And here we did get the reversal, but it wouldn't have done much. It got stuck sideways and then got moved on forward. Okay, here we got the breakout, but it continued up in that direction. So how do we tell whether we're getting a clean signal or a not clean signal? Here, we have a continuation. Here we had continuation. We had a, we hit the resistance area and we got indecision candles, but we got one indecision candle then our, because with, it, with the trading strategy, you have to get the candlestick and then you have to get the reversal. 
here we didn't. We got a continuation. And if you would have traded the breakout when it went above the resistance area, you would have gotten all that profit all the way up to this level. Okay, here, as you see, as we approach the support and resistance levels and break out of the triangle, okay, we're not sure which way it's going to go. We're having to wait for the breakout to tell us something. So once again, here is the absolute beautiful best way to see. It. Here we're looking at Bitcoin. Okay, Bitcoin's moving up pretty steadily, but we have a resistance area up here at the sixty-four thousand level. So this is when it hit sixty-four thousand, you know, a short while ago. Came up directly onto a resistance area, and what do we got? We got an indecision candle. See that I've circled it in red for you. That indecision candle tells us that that resistance area is working. Okay. Not telling you to make a trade. You haven't done anything. Right now, you've looked for your upward movement. You've looked for your strong trending movement. You've looked for your support and resistance, in this case, our resistance area. You look for the uh, indecision candle. Okay. That's all we got so far. But now we're looking for our reversal trade setup. The next candle is going to be the kicker. And it's where we would then initiate a trade. Okay. And with the reversal trade setup, we're only looking a reversal trade. There are other types of setups to look for a continuation trade, a breakout trade. Here we're only looking for the reversal trade setup. So we have our indecision candle forming right after all this push of green candles. We have it right on our support and resistance level. So what do we do next? Reversals occur quite often, but if you don't know what to look for, you cannot trade them. Reversals are one of the strongest price action setups and one of the easiest to trade. And because they occur so often, you can trade this setup exclusively and become a successful trader. So my, tra my strategy focuses on reversal only. However, these days I trade more price action setups, but the reversal trade comes in three parts. The preceding trend, the indecision candle, and then the reversal trend. So we want to look at the trend for the preceding candle, for the preceding movement. We saw the push up. So the preceding trend is a very strong bull, bearish move or bullish move, depending on what we're looking for. The preceding trend shows us that the bears, the opposite applies for the bullish price uh, preceding trend, which would show bulls or buyers trending towards resistance. Now, a preceding trend can be formed by as little as actually one candle. Okay, If you have one major candle, but I don't consider that a trend. I call it a preceding trend for the purpose of reversal trading. Then we look for the formation of the indecision candle. The reversal setup will have one of three indecision candles. One to three indecision candles. The indecision candle needs to form on or near to the support or the resistance area. If indecision does not form on or near the area of support, it's not a valid reversal. We get these candles all the time. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to get my marker on here. We get these things all the time in trading. If they don't form on this area of support and resistance, they have no validity. But we could have two or three of them. Now, in this case, they're forming, they formed before, so they're not important to us. But it, we could have two or three form right on this area because we get sometimes congestion or lack of movement. So why does it need to be on the support and resistance area? An indecision candle and a bullish preceding trend indicates that buyers are possibly losing control and sellers may be gaining control. 
In a bearish proceeding trend, it indicates that buyers are losing control and sellers are losing control and buyers are beginning. However, an indecision candle does not indicate that price will reverse with any degree of certainty. Not at all. doesn't tell you anything is going to happen. It's not hitting you on the back of the head and saying, here's an opportunity. An indecision candle only indicates one thing. What's that one thing? It indicates indecision. So, what we're looking for is when we get the formation of the indecision candle on the support or resistance area, we have to decide if we're going to execute a trade. Now, price could continue up, period. And we, we have no idea. We want to keep an eye on volume. Volume will help us understand what's going on. But you have one of two choices here. Price could continue up or price could reverse down. We have a better choice of price moving down. If we are able to set a stop loss relatively close, that even if the candle moves against us, we'll get stopped out with a few pip loss. So we want to set our stop loss directly above the resistance area. We want to enter the trade on this candle after the indecision candle. Okay. Now, we want to enter at the bottom of that resistance area. So if price can, continues up, you'll never execute your trade. If price comes down and you execute trade and it doesn't continue down and reverses really quickly, you'll have a few pip loss. But this is where the move is to be. This is not saying that this price is not going to go back up and go right through it. I mean, it could come down three pip, three channel, and then move right back through it. But this is the advantage we want to take is at this point, we have an opportunity to enter a low risk, high probability trade that might work out and it might not. But statistically, this is what we're playing as the odds. Whenever you can get a low risk trade in with a high probability trade, if you did this 10 times, six out of the 10 would work, four of them wouldn't work, but ultimately you would have profit. And like I said, volume is your last key factor. Okay, if the price is most likely gonna continue up, you would see increased volume, okay? If volume remains sideways or starts to ease down, you have a bigger opportunity. You're gonna have an ease down here. I'm not saying how many pips you're gonna get. It's not saying it's gonna drop tremendously. It's gonna drop enough for you to make profit. Okay. So you would set your, your take profit point at the next major support area. But it's the odds and probability that you're, you're looking for here. So when you have, a good setup, which moves the odds in your favor, allows you to set a very close stop loss and a very easy profit. Because this next candle, whatever it does, if it moves against you, your trade's not going to get executed. Okay. If it does move in your favor and then your trade gets executed and then it reverses, you're going to get out with a few pip loss. Plain and simple. So this is how you, you play the indecision candle trading strategy. But you'll find that once you got it down pat, it works quite well, it's quite reliable, and you can incorporate it regularly into your trading strategies. And this same setup will work for a continuation trade. It, I mean, there's so, once you get to this point, you can have a different strategy at a different entry level if you think it's gonna be a continuation. So you have many, ways to continue the setup once you get the price set up to turn it into a successful trade. So I hope you learned a little bit today. You have something to think about and you have the basis of a trade setup that you can make it your trade and use it for your successful trading in the future. Thank you very much for joining us and we'll talk to you again real soon. Good night now.